And welcome back to Bayou Time. We're very pleased to have with us Dr. Jimmy Ponder. He's a pain specialist, and I'm sure he's been really busy with all the roof repairs and everything that's going on. We thought it would be a good time for a discussion on pain management. He's a specialist with the Headache and Pain Center. Dr. Ponder, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. And I haven't seen you in a while, but you're sporting a very nice tie, and I'm, I'm oh, sure yeah. it's symbolic. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, one of our board certifications that, that we that I took back in 2005 or so when you uh, pass the examination, which includes uh, oral examinations and you have to go and actually do procedures on cadavers. Uh, part of uh, when you graduate from that, they give you this tie and this tie. It looks like a little dog is what it looks like, mm -hmm. which it is. They call it the Scotty dog. We call it a Scotty dog, but it's actually a view of the spine that we use quite frequently when we're doing spinal injections. And these little parts of the Scotty dog or the Scottish Terrier are different parts of the spine. So uh, we actually use the Scotty dog every day. I'll be a dog. <laughs> I never met anybody yeah. that has a tie that represents yeah, yeah. And, and this, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it says FIPP at the bottom. That's a Fellowship of Interventional Pain Practice. That was wow. The, that was the exam. That All right. That's cool. Passed. That's good information. Uh -huh. Let, let's talk about, I know Hurricane Ida has come through, and naturally, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have your regular entourage of people mm -hmm. that you treat. But since Hurricane Ida's come through, a lot of people have done their own work, working on their roofs, working mm -hmm. in their equipment, working on different things. I'm sure you've seen quite a few people from yeah. that. Yes, yes, we have, Martin. Uh, we can see anything from uh, people that have arthritis in their spine that may become symptomatic because they're using um, their bodies more, uh, twisting the spine, things like that. And a lot of times, if they if they just become symptomatic with uh, arthritis that was pre-existing, uh, we can maybe inject some numbing and healing medicine and get them back to where they're pain-free. I mean, you can herniate a disc or something like that. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, a lot of times, it, what we try to do is we try to treat things without surgery. So mm -hmm. we might have to do some type of injection under an X-ray machine uh, to try and get close to the nerve because they might have sciatica or pain radiating down the arm or something like that. So these injuries do occur. I mean, you can have anything. I mean, you can fall off a roof right. and then fracture your spine. And there's some procedures that we do for that also. Let me ask you, when you're, when you're looking under a scope and you're seeing the nerve and you're injecting things, is, is that more of a numbing uh, medicine or is it, is it a block or is those two separate things? Yeah, I mean, uh, we use the term nerve block, um, which uh, there are cer certain procedures we do where we're trying to actually uh, permanently or for a long period of time possibly interrupt a pain uh, process, like um, either freeze a nerve or heat a nerve, and, and that is considered a long-acting nerve block. But uh, you know, as a, as a physician, we refer to a lot of the things that we do every day. Uh, we inject the facet nerves. We do epidural uh, steroid injections, and we consider these nerve blocks also. But our goal with these um, local anesthetic and healing or steroid injections is to try to heal a process. Yeah. Right. So in yeah. other words, you just, I guess when you make some of these injections, for lack of a better term, sort of trying to put out the fire. Trying to put out the fire, right. And sometimes one puts out the fire, but sometimes the fire smolders mm -hmm. and you need a few. So uh, yeah, yeah, so that's our goal is to try to get the body to heal first. If we can't, then uh, you know, consider other things. Right, mm -hmm. but it is a first line of defense because obviously, and you've always said it in your talks, there's a certain line where at one point people have to relegate themselves to surgery, but there's mm. so many things they could do prior to having surgery that you have to try to, the whole gamut, don't you? I mean, our goal is to try to treat every, you know, everything that we can without open surgery. I mean, that we're, we're anesthesiologists, we're interventional pain physicians, and our goal is to try to do what we can through injections, 
physical therapy, exercise, rehabilitation, uh, whatever modalities that we can use, electrical stimulation, like I mentioned, heating, freezing, nerves. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> our goal is to try to, to get things to heal without having surgery. And then of course, every once in a while we see an MRI finding, they don't respond to what we do in surgery, might be the next step. But well, certainly not the first step in a lot of cases. Well, I'm sure if you see people that have a 16 millimeter <laughs> uh, bulging disc, sometimes it gets tough. What's the biggest bulge you ever treated successfully? Uh, we've, uh, we've gotten um, extruded discs which uh, is a severe form of a bulge to heal without surgery, okay, many times. Uh, and that's where the disc will actually come out of the, uh, out of the disc space and mm -hmm. it'll be extruded out into the spinal canal and there'll be fragments, you call it a free fragment. There'll be fragments in the spinal canal. But the body has an amazing ability to heal itself. And sometimes all, it, all you need to do is put out the fire, like you said, and the body can do the rest. I guess since we've last talked, anything new that's come down the pipe that maybe you could explain that is pretty creative in the way you treat things? Uh, well, yes. I mean, our, our slogan was for years that we um, relieve pain head to toe without surgery or narcotics. Okay, so mm -hmm. our, our premise is that we don't want to get people addicted or have them take pain medication the rest of their life. So mm -hmm. but we do use medications. It's just we try to avoid the habit forming types. Uh, we have to kind of change that now because there is some minor surgical procedures that we do. So uh, mm -hmm. I guess we can't say we don't do surgery at all because we do do some minor surgeries now mm -hmm. where we actually make some incisions. But there's a, a relatively new procedure that's been around probably within the last few years. It's called a spinal spacer device and it's generally used for elderly people that are having pain in their back or their legs, back and legs, and it's usually worse when they start walking. We call this condition neurogenic claudication, and it's, it's caused from something called spinal stenosis of the spine. As we all age, our spine gets arthritis in it, and it becomes smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And then an event may occur where vein gets obstructed in the spine or something happens and you, you start to develop symptoms. And these symptoms are very similar to what we call vascular claudication where a blood vessel might not be giving you enough blood flow to your legs. Mm -hmm. But the problem is actually coming from the spine. So the neurogenic claudication symptoms, usually you have pain in the back or legs when you walk, it worsens. You can relieve it with sitting and resting. You may be able to relieve it by leaning forward. They call it a shopping cart sign. Like you're in a grocery store, you're leaning over a shopping cart to get relief. So these spinal spacers are an, an option to what they used to surgically do for the condition called a decompressive laminectomy, where a part of the bone would be taken out. So as an option to that, it's minimally invasive. We do this procedure where we put a spacer into the spine and try to relieve some of that pressure. So we're strictly nerves. talking nerves, because you're right, vascular, you could have veins that are crushed by arteries that you don't get blood flow, right. but y'all don't do the vascular, y'all work on the, the neuropathic ones. We work on the, the nerve, or the mm -hmm. neurogenic, we call yeah. it, uh, mm -hmm. part of, um, of the claudication. And, and the symptoms are very similar, vascular and neurogenic. So sometimes we have to do MRIs, CTs, and other tests to try to figure out exactly what's uh, causing mm -hmm. the, so the claudication. So a vascular blockage that would be maybe caused by a nerve path blockage could be very similar. Very similar, almost identical symptoms, yes. Wow, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. Learn something so, new every So day. we do these different tests and we figure out what's the cause of it and uh, what's an appropriate treatment. And of course, we always try to go uh, more conservative, least invasive to more invasive. So we may try a few things, some injections, nerve blocks, things like that to try to relieve the symptoms. And then we might advance to a spinal spacer and then eventually to surgery if it's needed. Let me ask you this. We've got about a couple of minutes left, but I'm, I'm always hearing 
I don't know if super glue is a proper term, but it seems to me, you mm -hmm. know, you use a lot of pretty good glues now developed for medicine that can hold things together. Yes. Uh, well, the one we use in the body is uh, called polymethyl methacrylate, and it, it, uh, it's a liquid, a spongy liquid, and it hardens into cement, basically, mm -hmm. in the body. The body's heat turns it a uh, chemical reaction and makes it real hard. Uh, the, the area that we use that particular um, cement type device is something called a kyphoplasty where uh, people develop compression fractures where they, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you could fall off a roof, but most of the time it's elderly people that have osteoporosis and mm -hmm. women have osteoporosis more than men. So, you know, sometimes they develop these painful fractures in their back, which we diagnose by bone scan, CT, MRI. Uh, if they look like they're a recent fracture, they may be a candidate to put this cement in there, stabilize the fracture and eliminate the pain. Yeah, because with osteoporosis, the bone's very porous. Does, this, does it work itself into the pores, the cement? It works its way into the fracture, into the pores, and it stabilizes. When it hardens, it stabilizes it, because a lot of the pain is from the fracture moving, so it stabilizes the fracture, and uh, it eliminates that pain. Well, that's very interesting. So yeah. with about 50 seconds left, how can people get in contact with you if they suspect that they, uh, they need a little help? Uh, we treat pain from head to toe. Um, we're, we're not just a headache clinic. We're mostly a pain clinic. Mm -hmm. um, we use non-surgical, uh, non-open surgical options, uh, try to avoid opioids. Uh, so our website is answertopain.com. Um, and then we have offices in Gray, right outside of Homa and New Iberia. So uh, our number in Gray is 985-580-1200. Uh, That's our phone number. but if it's easier to go to the website, all the information is there, answertopain.com or www.theheadacheandpaincenter.com. There you have it, Dr. Jimmy Ponder. You can go in his office, <laughs> see his tie, and uh, like I said, he's a great golfer. Thank you, Dr. Ponder. We appreciate it. Give him a call. We'll see you right around the corner.